Fans have waited years, decades, and ever since this Kickstarter was announced in 2020, Suikoden fans have been so eager to get their hands on a Yuden Chronicle 100 Heroes. Well, that moment is finally here, and it's been a journey full of ups, full of downs, delays, and even tragic moments, but I want to thank 505 Games and Rabbit and Bear Studio for providing me with this review copy for this game. And we want to honor the memory of Yoshitaka Miriyama, who is the creator of this game. But with all of that said, we will still attempt to review this game as fair and objective as possible. And we will have fun while we're going into this review. Guys, there's a lot to talk about. Let's go ahead and jump into the Cali Q, a Union Chronicle 100 Heroes review. So you guys know me first and foremost, I like to break a game down to the very T and I want to start with the presentation in the menu screens of a Uden Chronicle 100 Heroes. Everything is nice and laid out pretty simply for you to enjoy and get to the other different sections. There's an item, magic and equipment section for all of your characters. Now I like the layout of the menu screen, it's pretty good and easy to follow. I do wish that the response of time was just a little bit quicker though, but the menu is still relatively easy and good to get through. The same thing can be said for the world map menu as well and the main menu. Pretty much everything is self-explanatory. There's nothing here that particularly bothers me or makes me annoyed. Everything is nice, seamless, and you shouldn't have too hard of a time navigating and getting through the UI system in the Uden Chronicle. And here in the status image, you can see the uh, beautiful artworks and portraits of the characters, as well as seeing their abilities and some of their skills. This is a great area to see which characters has which skills that can be useful for battle, as well as the support characters that you might have in your team. Now, one thing I'll be honest and say, at first the rune system and the rune layout kind of confused me a little bit, and gradually as I progressed the game, I started learning a little bit more about how it all works, but in the beginning it was a little bit overwhelming and just a little bit confusing to understand exactly how the rune layouts work for each character as each character has different layouts. Next, I want to move over to the graphics of the game. Euden Chronicle uses that beautiful 2.5D graphic style that I am beginning to absolutely fall in love with. The game continuously gives you these amazing camera angles with these amazing visuals complementing the 2D sprites. I personally believe Euden Chronicle is one of the best looking 2.5D JRPGs I have ever seen and I have been loving every single ounce of these expressive character sprites, these amazing 3D backgrounds. One of the only areas that I can say where it kind of drops the ball a little bit is perhaps the world map where it is not as appealing or as, as expressive but it's still quite a sight to see. I absolutely love the graphics in the Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes. The sprites are top-notch work i enjoyed the camera angle and for me the graphics are an absolute check it's a simply beautiful game to me now let's go ahead and move over to the battle system and gameplay where you'll spend the majority of your time when it comes to a union chronicle now Fundamentally, the battles are engaging and fun, and I loved learning new rune skills that my characters could use. Now, one thing I have to say is I do wish that menu optimization was a little bit more prevalent when it comes to this game. In the Suikoden series, the commands were carried out swiftly and quickly, but however, in the Yuden, there is a tad lag, and I wish that the battles were a little bit faster as well as the UI. I really do enjoy team combos because they are pretty cool seeing which combos between between each characters can unlock different cool new animations and I really enjoy seeing the team combo system come back in a Yuden Chronicle. The bosses are visually gorgeous and very creative. I do like the aspect of the gimmick battles which gimmick battles are there's a certain thing in particular boss battles that you can utilize to help you take down that boss a little bit quicker. They're optional and you don't have to use them but they can make your life a little bit better. <laughs> Now, again, doubling back to the animation and the speed of the battles, I do miss characters attacking simultaneously. I do wish that the characters would just speed up just a little bit and the menu can sometimes feel like a little bit of a slog. So I've seen some valid criticism when it comes to the pacing of the battles and I won't exactly go against that, but 
once you start to get going, you do become used to this new change of pace. And ultimately, it didn't affect my enjoyment of battles too much. But if I were to go back and play Suikoden, I probably could definitely feel the difference. I just wish these battles were a little bit faster and wish that you could skip some of the same animations that you will watch over and over again. So let's go over the mechanics in the menu. There's the attack, rune lens. Some characters have shield, dodge, or even counter. You can use items or your hero combo. We also have the SP and MP system where SP is a character's exclusive skills that they can gain SP from each regular attack turn. Whereas MP is the standard traditional JRPG magic points that you have in each JRPG. Now, this is very unique to the Iyuden slash Suikoden series because Suikoden really doesn't use MP to that degree. So this was quite a little bit of a change to a more traditional standard format when it comes to these type of games. Now, the magic in this game game is okay. I do believe it leaves a little bit to be desired as sometimes the risk to reward of using magic isn't exactly really worth it and it's really hard to replenish MP in this game as during at least my playthrough I didn't encounter really too many ways to replenish MP other than just sleeping at the end or something like that. Now, since we're dealing with so many different varieties of characters, each character is categorized into three different sort of types. The short range characters can only hit the front row of an enemy from your front row. Medium characters can hit front or back row of enemies from your front row or can hit enemies front row from your back row. Long characters can hit front or back row of enemies from your back row. So to quite Put it quite simply guys, in case you're confused, mid-range characters can hit mid-range opponents. Long-range characters are usually characters like with throwing knives, bow and arrows, guns, things of that nature. Typically the short-range characters are some of the powerhouse characters. Each of these characters are categorized and they're easily identifiable. If you just go ahead and check their status, it will have either an L, an M, or an S to signify which type of character that they are. Now, S characters should probably always be in the front line. If you put them in the back, they will be unable to do basic attacks. They can still use rune and other things though. The middle characters I like to call the jack of all trades. They can somewhat jump over two lines when basic attacking and they're just a good all around neutral natural character. L's characters are unaffected by placement and they can hit any spot at any time. Usually though these characters have lower defense so rear guard is probably the best way to go when it comes to these characters. Another easy way to just determine which type of character is just look at their weapon. It'll pretty much give it away. If it's a long range weapon they're probably a long range character. If it's something like knives or a short sword or even a long sword in case of a certain character then you would probably want to place them to the front medium characters are a little bit harder to decipher you just have to kind of check that for yourself and see i for me i personally love this system as i believe it gives every character somewhat of a purpose and a different mechanic so that you can enjoy different aspects of the battle and with a battle system that features over 100 characters, there's just a plethora of different varieties and teams that you can make. And I've always loved that ability to personally customize my team in a JRPG the way that a Union Chronicle lets me do. But alas, guys, I could spend all video talking about the battle system. In wrapping it up, I thoroughly enjoy the hero combos. I thoroughly enjoy the visual aspect and the gimmick battles of the battle system. I also thoroughly enjoyed the boss battle so far. In fact, the boss battles has been some of my highlights with this battle system. I also enjoy the constant enemy variety that is present in this game. There are very few color palette swaps in this game and the enemy variety you can tell Rabbit and Bear just had a fun time designing some of these enemies. So all in all, there are a lot of things that make me very happy about this battle system. However, I do wish that it was a little bit faster and that the pace was picked up a little bit more and that MP had a bigger presence and that the SP system was a little less confusing. But all in all, the battle is a check. I really, truly enjoy it. And I do think you guys will have a great time despite some of the little critiques that I have. Now, moving on to the music, I'm going to try to keep this spoiler free, but there's a point in the game 
and it just gave me goosebumps. I just felt so touched by this scene. And it reaches this beautiful point where the music complements the cutscene so well. And that's about all I can say. The music in the Yudin Chronicle has been stellar. I've enjoyed every soundtrack that I've heard, from the cozy town themes to the thrilling battle system theme. I have loved every single piece of music that I've heard from a Yudin Chronicle thus far. There's not one track that bothers me, and I think every track complements the environment and the scenes extremely well. Now, when it comes to the story, I will say right off the bat, if you were going into this game with a Suikoden 2 sort of mindset, you may be slightly disappointed. The theme is a little bit lighter than Suikoden 2 and more akin to that of Suikoden 1. Sometimes there's some funny banter or dialogue and with a character like Leanne in your party, there's always bound to be some quippy quirk that she might say at a certain moment. I will compliment the story on, however, making the conflict that it is trying to tell us seem meaningful and it feels relevant. One thing I'll also comment is the sometimes the pacing of the story is a little bit wonky, but I was still engaged with the story every step of the way, all the way into the finale. I was just excited to get to what was next, meet the new characters, see the different kingdoms, see the beautiful epic towns that this game have. I was enthralled in the story the entire time. So as far as the story go without revealing too much, you follow with Noah and you'll meet his other comrades. You'll get to learn the story of Singh and Marisa as well and their respective backstories. There is also DLC plan for these characters so it'll be nice to see a little bit more of the backstory when it comes to these characters so i will say without revealing too much you should enjoy your time with this story just don't expect quite a astounding masterpiece this story is a little bit by the numbers and by the book it kind of feels a little safe at certain times but i still felt some of that classic miriama storytelling and i believe he was just getting started and probably by a Yudin chronicle 2 we would really see this story go to places that suikoden 2 went as well so as far as the story goes, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed a story about the warring nations and betrayal and plotting and conniving leaders and things like that. I think Miriyama's classic style of storytelling was beginning to bleed through. I truly believe by Yudin Chronicle 2, we would have got a story akin to that of Suikoden 2 as well. So as far as the story go, it's a check for me, guys. You should enjoy your time here. Just don't set your story expectations too high and you should be okay. I, and I can see where some folks may be a little bit disappointed by my statement, but I have to keep it honest. I do not think this story is on the level of a Suikoden 2 story. However, that's fine because this is the first entry of a Yudin Chronicle and the first Suikoden game didn't have the most amazing story either. So they get a pass for me when it comes to the story. Next, let's touch on one of everyone's favorite feature about these games, and that is the war battle system, where it takes the game into like a strategy JRPG sort of environment. I enjoy the system that is here in place in the Union Chronicle. I do wish it was a little bit more akin to that of Suikoden 3. However, what was given to us here was a great foundation if there were to be more built upon it. I like that you can control each unit, send them where to go. It's overall pretty standard and pretty simple, but it's visually appealing and I like it very much. I do wish that I could have edited each and every unit to my specific liking, like you could do in other Suikoden games. However, once you get a little bit further, there is an option to do a sort of variation of that. So ultimately, I was pleased with what I had. Would I like a little bit more depth in the future Eudin Chronicle sequel? Yes. Would I like more options? Yes. But for right now, this was a good foundation and I appreciate this mechanic even being in this game as it's a nice change of pace from the traditional JRPG standard affair of battling. So I will always give these games a thumbs up when it comes to implementing this strategic JRPG element and aspect to the game because it gives me something different and new and fun to look forward to. I also really like it from the standpoint of a story. Sometimes the battles are bigger than just going turn for turn. Sometimes we need to have a war. We need to just duke it out. And I love that a Yudin Chronicle gives us the option to duke it out on the battlefield. There's also the rage and morale buttons that you can press if they build all the way up, which adds another little element of interaction with these battles. All in all, I'm happy with it. Could it be expanded upon in the future? Yes, but right now, this was good enough for me. As a longtime fan, I was happy with what we got. 
Next, let's talk about the big elephant in the room, and that is the characters. As we all know, this game boasts a plentiful amount of characters, and the character diversity is one of the best I've ever seen in any JRPG ever. I mean, we have tree people, shark people, elves, dwarves, kangaroos, wolves, all sort of variety of character are involved in this game and I absolutely love it. I think this game stands head and shoulders above any other JRPG when it comes to character diversity because this is absolutely essential to give us different looks. I mean for me personally, shark people all the way. So a Uden Chronicle 100 Heroes does not disappoint when it comes to character diversity and I think that that was something super important that this game had to nail and in my opinion I love it. The characters are full with amazing personalities even if a little tropey they all have some redeeming qualities that you might like but to me the character diversity is second to none. Another cool character aspect when it comes to this game that it does is the character attendance system whereas if you have a party of six that you thoroughly enjoy you can place the main characters that are required to be in for the story to the attendance spot without messing with your current party. I think that most JRPGs should do that and even though a Yudin Chronicle is suffering from lacking a couple of quality of life features, this is a feature that I'm pretty glad that it has and I think other JRPGs should implement this as well. So what's an alliance and all these characters without an HQ? One cool aspect in a Yudin Chronicle is that you can Build your HQ as you progress through the game and build the population of your empire. This is a feature that many of us was looking forward to. As you can see here on the screen, your HQ starts off in pretty bad shape, everything's pretty beat up and it's just not looking good. However, as you unlock more characters, find more recruits, find more resources, your population will increase and there's this nice roadmap of the way to build your kingdom and build your empire as you progress along the game. To me, this is a better system than that even of the Suikoden games. This is this system perfected and I think that this is the best version of this system that we've ever seen. Previously in Suikoden games all you had to do was recruit certain amounts of characters and the HQ would eventually begin to develop itself. But here in the Yudin Chronicle you need to do the legwork, you need to do the wood chopping, you need to do the stone collecting and I like that because it gives you an extra incentive to collect things around the map and I love that there's a roadmap that certain characters has specific roles in order to grow the HQ just like it would be in a real community. So with these sort of things comes mini games. There's mini games and mini things like the hot springs. There's also a cooking mini game as well. I will not spoil all of them because I want you guys to go and enjoy that for yourself and find those characters in your own playthroughs. So I'll just keep it at that. I love the HQ system. It's the exact thing that I wanted for a potential sweeter than six and we got it here in a Union Chronicle and it just makes the whole entire game feels that much more cozier. Euden Chronicle is such a big game. There's so much inside of this game that honestly even my almost 20 minute review still has not touched everything that is in this game. But if I had to start wrapping this game up, I really love the different variety of characters. I love the classic Miriyama style of storytelling, albeit if it's not as strong as some of his previous works. I love the cozy nature of this game. It feels very homey. It feels very familiar for previous Suikoden fans. If you're a Suikoden fan, you will feel right at home here. And it's okay. The mainstream critics and reviewers may not understand what the hype is about even after playing this game. Some folks will not understand why this series means what it means to us and we have to be okay with that. So despite whatever scores it may get from any other outlet, even despite my score, if you enjoy it, you should enjoy it. There are some nitpicks to the game, like not being able to save on the world map, not being able to interact with certain objects, and there's just a lot of quality of life features truly missing in a Yudin Chronicle. I wish that they could have kind of kept certain things up to date because there are some major quality of life issues here um, and optimization issues that would have been so much better if they were fixed in this game. Also little small nitpicks like no footsteps or no songs when you're fishing. Things like that is what keeps a Union Chronicle from potentially being everyone's 10 out of 10. However, for me, this is the game that I've always been wanting, even if it's a little rough. The heart, the passion, the love, Muriyama, Rabbit and Bear, the essence of Suikoden lives on and it is still here.
my final verdict for a Yudin Chronicle 100 Heroes as of right now will be 9 Cali Q's out of 10. This game is not perfect. This game has some rough edges. However, if you enjoy a cozy, lighthearted, but ambitious JRPG, if you're willing to overlook some of its flaws, a Yudin Chronicle 100 Heroes just might be for you. I clocked in over about 45 hours on my initial playthrough. I will be doing another playthrough as well, on top of trying to 100% the game. Thank you once again, Rabbit and Bear Studio and 505 Games for providing the channel with a review code. Be sure to let me know your thoughts down below on how you're enjoying the game and if you're going to consider trying it out. Thank you once again for watching this review. I have a ton more Ayudin content coming for you guys. I hope you guys will enjoy. God bless and have fun with the game. I'll see you guys next time on the Cali Q Review.